So welcome everyone to Digital Marketing 101 for Musicians. This is a small business basics webinar series part of that. And today is July 30th, 2020. This session is hosted by the City of Mississauga, presented by the Mississauga Business Enterprise Center, MBEC, and also want to do a quick shout out to the Mississauga Arts Council, who we've been working with, and Sherry is on our, our panel today. She is with the council and uh, pretty excited to have um, you guys on board. And we're going to do a shout out also to some of the programs you're doing coming up. Amanpreet Baines is here also. She's going to be moderating for us today. Welcome, Amanpreet. We also have some polls, which is exciting. So watch for that. They'll be available in the side panel and you'll be able to access that. That information will help us through the presentation just to get to know you a little bit better. So I'm Laura Dunkley. I am the digital marketing consultant at MBEC and an entrepreneur at heart. I've been um, being an entrepreneur since I was about 19, 18, 19, and started my first business, retail service business, and then sold it a few years, a couple decades later, and uh, became a communications consultant because communications is so important, especially during this digital marketing time, digital time, and uh, that is what I specialize in. So that's my background. I came to work with the city a couple years ago. So I'm hoping you'll connect with me on social. I'm on Twitter. Instagram and LinkedIn at Laura L. Dunkley. And you can also check out my blog, lauradunkley.com, where I write all about this. And uh, I will reference a few articles through there. So please connect with me there. And then my contact information is there as well. So a little bit about MBAC. It is that central source for small business information, resources, and guidance. And we are part of the City of Mississauga's Economic Development Office focused on supporting small businesses. You can find all... Aha. Okay, I'm going to hold off just one sec because I have to make... Hold on. Give me two seconds. So the Mississauga Business Enterprise Center is part of the Economic Development Office at the City of Mississauga, and we're here to support you, the small business owner. Some of the things we do is like today's webinar. We have a few of them coming up. They're constantly changing, and we have a boot camp next week. We have a CRA if you want to learn more about taxes. It's another free one. They're all free right now. And if you know anyone in the food and beverage business, that's also available. And we have a networking one. That's something to think about. I know a few of you said that you are just thinking about business and just starting out. The 10 steps to starting your own business is one that I definitely recommend taking. And one, we're very excited to say that one of our programs, our entrepreneur programs, is the Starter Company Plus program. And we have a dedicated music stream. So for you musicians who are just starting out thinking about expanding your business and located in Mississauga, there is entrepreneurship and training that's available as well as an opportunity for a grant. What I will say is learn more about it. Go to mississauga.ca slash starter company plus and attend one of our mandatory info sessions. August 4th and 6th is for the general stream. 11th and 13th is for the music industry. Um, if you can do that, you have to attend that to be eligible. So check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And one of what we've done through this very difficult time is our marketing and research team has created a COVID-19 web portal so that all of the information and resources that are available are in one place and the futures unlimited.ca slash COVID-19 it's updated regularly depending on the stages the the current information is there and readily available for you one thing when you're going through this particularly for you check out the business relief portal because under that you can do a search for music and see all the opportunities that are there for you for music so have a look at that afterwards and then another service we've provided because of the current situation is the business advisory service. So if you have legal or accounting questions, because I am not a, um, a lawyer or an accountant and our team is not internally. So if you have those kind of questions, you'll want to speak to a lawyer and an accountant and we provide these 
free of charge for you currently. Now there is some eligibility, so reach out to our small business, susan.loveless at mississauga.ca. If you're looking for a business coach, and we're gonna talk a little bit about a business planning and you really want that one-on-one -on -one consultation and support, we also have business consultants on, on hand to help you. So please consider this. It's, uh, it's, not, it's a very limited time, so reach out to them if this is a need for you. Mississaugamay.ca is a directory for our local musicians and other, if you're a vendor in the area and you wanna be listed, Check that out. Hashtag Mississauga Made is all over social media too, and you can see what people are saying. So Mississaugamade.ca is where you can find that information. And we also have Shop Here. It's a digital Main Street program, and the city of Mississauga is part of this program. It's an opportunity to get a free website made. There are some eligibility requirements for it. It's part of a Shopify, MasterCard. There's a, a Google is part of this program. If you want to learn more about that to see if you're eligible, I know the program goes beyond Mississauga too. So check it out to see if that is something that would work for you. And just know that there is some ongoing costs afterwards, but uh, the opportunity has just come up recently to be able to do this. So it is uh, another resource available. And this is where I will say that Sherry, if you want to jump in, this is the MississaugaArtsCouncil.com who is here today and they have some amazing programs coming up. Sherry, do you wanna to speak to this? Yeah, of course. Um, so right now we have our MICA grants right now that have been open and you can apply. The biggest one for musicians is called a Musicians as Video Makers Grant. So we'll give you the tools, we'll give you one year of Adobe Premiere and we'll give you six hours of you know uh, tutorials and uh, stuff on social media, video editing, and things like that, as well as the music video will be featured in a Saga Music Fest. And then if the People's Choice Award will win $500. So it's a great opportunity if you want to just get more skills, as well as learning how to make your own music videos. So if you just go to uh, bit.ly-microgrants, uh, it has all of our information and you can go there and we're accepting applications until August 19th. Excellent. Thanks, Sherry. This is your other one. Yes. So on the similar thing. So we're also working on um, free digital workshops. So digital marketing workshops for creative. So we're working on getting these coming around to the sometime in the fall, really just on like video production, graph design, social media, web development. We really want to help artists really take on the digital world and digital escape. So if you just stay tuned to our website and social media for more information and we'll hear more information soon. Excellent. Thanks, Sherry. Some amazing things. And we're going to tell you through this presentation why these are so important for you to jump into to get, help you build your brand, but also continue to develop content is really important. So these opportunities are amazing. So let's get started. Digital marketing. Why digital marketing? Well, I'll tell you why we need to focus on digital marketing is because everyone is there. They're online, they're users more and more every day as the technology develops and people are becoming comfortable with the technology. They are on there and they're active and their expectation of brands and other people increases. So whether you're a musician, a business owner, who you are, all of these stats, every time I do this, they just keep going up. So we have 4 billion plus internet users. Most of them now are mobile. So you have to think that that experience when you send your information is mobile driven. And, and how is that going to look your information on mobile and videos? And you guys are in, musicians are in the place to be able to create some amazing content because we know 92% watch online videos and Google searches. They're, they want to find you. So if they're going to put your name because they saw you at a concert and they're going to Google you in the search, will they find you? And that's what we're going to talk about today is to help you build your online brand. And one, and there's stats all over, and I do have a social media seminar coming up as well. So there will be more information on that. But one thing that has come out of this is Facebook continues to lead. 
And that is where many of you already are, as you had mentioned, and so you're comfortable with that platform. So now how do we leverage that? Because obviously there's so many people out there and YouTube, one of the biggest search engines on top of being social is, is up there too. And you guys have content that's all for YouTube as well. So this is super. Um, and as we go down, Instagram is a, a major platform user. TikTok is coming up and we're going to talk a little bit about TikTok. Um, and then there's other things. Twitter's kind of down and I know people are still on Twitter. What we're going to talk about too is, is that the place that you should be? So everything we're going to talk about today is about helping you be the best digital marketer for your brand. And so what is right for your business? Because there's so much out there. We have industry stats, there's things like that, but are you, is this right for your business? Just because someone says it, just because I'm telling you, maybe you should be on YouTube. You need to be able to be able to identify what is right for your business. So I created a seven step guide. Know that it is in sequential order. However, some things are done at different times. So the first thing you need to have is a business plan. You need to go, know where you're going and why you're going there and how you're gonna get there. So on top of that, one of the most important things is knowing your target audience. And then you have to set those marketing goals. Where do you wanna go? How are you gonna measure success if you don't know and have targets to aim for? And then are you using the right channels? Are you supposed to be using email marketing? Is it better that you spend time on Instagram? All of those things, there is a critical checklist that we're gonna run through. And then you have to have a plan because you may have these great channels but what are you gonna do with them afterwards? What kind of content are you gonna create? What, how much time are you gonna spend on what platform to get the best return on investment? And then what's great content? Because content is king and it continues to be incredibly important. So what makes great content? And then how are you gonna track your performance? How do you know if you are successful? So this is what we're gonna run through today. And before we get started, let's get to know you a little bit more Amonpreet's going to put up the polls and you should find them on your sidebar. If you can check on that and let me know what that is, it's what are your greatest challenges with digital marketing? Do you want to know, are you having trouble knowing where to start? Is it engaging with your audience online? What type of content are you supposed to create? Maybe that's your greatest challenge. What platforms to use and how do you know if you're doing it right? What is your greatest challenge. So we just have a few minutes, actually, I think a few seconds, not very long. So jump on those polls and let us know, and I will let you know the results. The second question that's up there is what digital skill are you most interested in improving? Is it marketing? Is it social media, web development, video production, or graphic design? Now you might be interested in all of them, but what's the most interest that you have in what platform. So for the first question, what are your greatest challenges with digital? How do you know if you're doing it right? Seems to be leading the way with knowing where to start. And that's true. And that's a good point because knowing if you're doing it right, it's a lot of time to do this. And, and I have to be honest with you, you want to make sure you know if you're going in the right direction and things change. So you need to know when to pivot, at what point, when do you create different content and what um, is success for you. So we will talk about that and knowing where to start, we're gonna talk about that as well today too. And then how to engage and engagement is key. So this is something um, that is always learning, we'll always be learning. This is for constant discussion. Don't think after this digital marketing 101, which is a baseline, that you're going to know it all because the more I do this and I do this all the time, the more I realize I don't know. So this, make sure you stay in the conversation with different people and you bring that team along to help you. So how to know if I'm doing it right wins for sure. And Amon, I think my, Oh, let's see what the second one is. And marketing is, is a skill that you want to learn. Social media and video production are second. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for letting us know about that. That's good to know. I will also share that those results with those people who attended that will go out to you. 
So let's start. It all starts with a plan. It's your business plan and business plans can be very complicated, but today we're going to talk about it as simple as possible. So you can just get started and those key questions we're going to answer is the who, what, why, when, where, and how to run your business. And there is a reference at the bottom. If you want to learn a little bit more, there's a framework checklist that you can find there. So let's get into this a little bit. You have a music business or you want to have a music business. So what does that business plan look like? This is where you're going to ask at the very beginning. What is your why? Why are you even doing this? Is it a hobby? Does it give you enjoyment or do you really want to make money out of this? And who are you as a musician? Is it? Um, what's your style? What's your what's your? Um, What's your brand and, and who do you represent and, and what are those things that are really important to you and what sets you apart from your competition? Maybe it is the fact that you can create amazing new songs. Maybe it's the fact that you can teach on top of creating new, um, new songs. Maybe it's because you're an amazing backup artist that you make other people look great. And all of those are really important. You need to know them, believe in them and write them down. And then again, it comes down to why are you doing this? Is it for just for fun? Because if it's just for fun and you don't need to make money, it's not really a music business, but you're doing this to create a living or to create extra income. You're, you want to commit to this. So know why you're doing this. And the part of the business plan is right here. It's going to create your vision, your values, your mission statement. So your vision is where you want to go. And your mission statement is how you're going to get there. And then that value added proposition. What do I have? That's so great that I'm going to give back to my. My fans, and then that competitive advantage, those little things, maybe it's because you can travel, maybe because you can create some great videos. Know what that is. There is a great article there too. If you want to see. Um, learn more about this section. And so this is your dreams. Where do you want to go? What are your goals? Do you want to be on a live stage with hundreds of people? And, and honestly, right now we all miss live music and we can't wait till that happens again. But currently that may change your goals and, and you don't always have those exact timelines, but write it down. If that's somewhere where you eventually want to be, put that down. Maybe you want to be known globally or travel globally. Maybe you want to have X amount of people listening to your music and maybe you have, and you should have a monetized goal in there as well. So where do you want to go with your business? And then what resources do you have to help you get there? Time is really important. Money, absolutely. Doesn't mean you need a lot to get started. I've bootstrapped so many businesses. I know that you can do this on very little money. Um, and a lot of that is relationship building and it's getting out there, but know what you have to work with and then know what skills you have. Those are incredibly valuable. Put those down. And then it comes down to what do you have to sell? Do you have albums? Do you have digital downloads that you have? Are you creating music? What projects are you working on or do you have in the plan? Are you able to sell tickets to live events? Is this something that you put out there? And then maybe you have merchandise. So this is the product and service section, and this is how you're going to generate revenue. Because if you aren't clear about that, it's really hard from a marketing standpoint to focus on where your advertising dollars go and your time. You need to know what you're selling. And then your business plan also includes market research. So right now, if you had what you were doing two years ago, or even a year ago, things are changed. They've changed because of the current situation and the, the pandemic. And we all know that we've gone now into doing um, online events, things like that. So that is really important to stop and pivot and write down. What is that? What that you can do? What's the current situation allow and where is it going to go? And then you also want to know more about your target audience. I'll tell you your target audience and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that, but the target audience, we're a little different now. We can't go out and I speak to you from this um, standpoint of a fan is go out and see live and we miss it. So there's a lot of, if you have a persona about your audience and you think you knew what they wanted before, you might want to revisit that and then have a look in inside 
um, the motivators and challenges your target audience are because everything we do, everything you do as a business owner, as you build your brand, it needs to be customer centric. So get to know your target audience. And then at the end of the day, you're going to write down about your target audience, what's important to them. Age, gender, all of that, you're going to create this avatar and it's a segment and then go into it a little more deeper. We're going to fine tune that. It has to be part of your business plan, that segment, that overarching understanding of your audience. And then when you get into marketing, you start to build out and create this avatar, this persona for who, who you're actually going to be talking to and communicating to, because that's going to influence the type of content you create when you're going to go on social media, all of that, and that will be more teased out in the marketing section. And this is the marketing. How are you going to promote your business and how are you going to communicate with your audiences? Because it might not just be your fans. You're going to have other people that you need to communicate with. And then your sales, are you going to be doing phone calls? Are you meeting people is very difficult. Are you going to DM them through social? What are those strategies for you to connect to be able to sell your product? Or do you have online options? Because right now everyone's online, which is part of why you're here is to build your brand, but also to put in place tools and strategies to help you promote and sell your products and services. So now we're going to write it down and include a timeline and make sure that you put in place times that you're going to evaluate regularly. Business plan is important. Don't spend a ton of time. If you want to spend a lot of time and you want to develop it, the Starter Company Plus program is a place where they will walk you through doing a business plan. So if you are serious, really consider a program like that. And you can also learn more and get templates at this URL here as well. And that, but it's, it's, it's very large and it can be overwhelming. I just want you to put it down, consider all of these points and make sure that you have a foundation to move forward so that you can build out your digital marketing stra strategy. And then we wanna know who's on your team. Most of you will be doing a lot of this yourself, and if no, nothing else, you will always need to be the contractor of your own brand. It's you, you know yourself most, and then when you build out your team, whether it's a contract consultant, or maybe at some point you have an employee or a student or an intern to help you, or you want to hire someone to support you for creating a video or a piece of content, you are the one that has to actually always oversee what your brand is. And where can you find this? There's us here at MBEC, there's online freelancers, you can ask for referrals, you can put out an ad even. And then I always encourage you to learn more, continue to learn, go online, do tutorials, reach out to us on our webinars, Miss Saga Arts Council, as they had mentioned, they have a large program too. But know who's on your team and tap into that because none of us can do this alone. So target audiences, this is what we call a stakeholder map. And I do encourage you, even if it's a spreadsheet, if you prefer, I'm more of an artistic mind mapping person. So I like the bubbles, but no matter what, your business is the center. And then out from that, you have a lot of people. And what a stakeholder is, is the people who inform are part of the success of your organization, of your business. And so that could be someone who's investing in you. It could be a grant program, um, a sponsor for a show that you're going to do. Employees, you might not have employees, but you may be working with the digital marketing consultant. You might have partners. I know people, someone asked a question about how do you partner and, and, and collaborate with other people. Collaboration right now, especially during COVID, is really important. So go out there and think about those different partners and not in the sense that, hey, we're going to put it down as a business partner. These are just potentially partners on projects. Maybe it's a venue partner. How can I co-sponsor? You have to write them all down. And then this gives you a big picture. Community government, such as um, the, your local municipality, who are the influencers? Who are the ones talking about music? You'll want to find out who those are. Competition, mm, that, that may be much smaller, a smaller one. I would say focus more on just making yourself excellent. And then customers are what I would call your fans. So write all of those down. 
And now we have to get into who your target audience is. It's going to get fine tuned a little bit here. And that's going to be your fans. So when you were out in the world of live music and you had people out there and it was a sea of faces and they were great and they were, they're singing and it's going to come back. Um, I sure hope it does. And but you don't really get to know them. And what these target audiences exercise is to be able to know what they are beyond just the fan in, in the audience. And this is what's going to make and enrich your social media conversations, your engagement, informing your brands, and even what kind of products and services you're going to create. So take that person out there and, and we're going to create a little avatar and a person and put a face to it and, and a little bit more information. Whoops going the wrong way here. And that can include age, might include gender, maybe not so much. Where are they going to live? If you're going to be global, it could be everywhere. I would sure segment that if it's different cultures have different types of um, interests, work, children, do they, how many kids do they have? Do they have kids running around? Are they, are they really young? Are there millennials that don't have kids? Are they thinking about having children? What's their income level? Um, and what it comes down to, what kind of things do they do on the side? Because you're not always going to be just talking about music. You're going to get to know your audience beyond just them showing up. So maybe they like hiking. Maybe they like traveling. All of those different things. Put it down. You never know when you might need it to create a post or answer questions or engage with someone. And really look into their behaviors. What motivates them? What challenges? How often do they want to go out? Are they willing to go online to listen to purchase a live, a live event ticket? All of these things will inform that. So this is the list of guiding questions as you go through this. What are their challenges? What motivates them? How can you help them? So this is how you're going to inform them. Why are they going to choose you? What, what is it about you? And this is where we're going to talk about where you get this information because it's really hard for us to define that ourselves like, well, why do they really like to listen to me? Well, maybe you should ask your fans, do an interview, do a focus group. Why are they choosing you? Well, maybe it's your ability to perform. Maybe it's your ability to, to connect with them on the stage where you, you're, you give humor to them. Maybe it's your off stage presence where you, you have an interest that they connect to. All of those are really part of it. And of course, your product and service, your music, is fundamental in this. So what media do they use? If you like Twitter and everyone's on Instagram, you're going to probably want to go on to Instagram. And then there might be a primary and secondary audience to consider. So we're going to find this information, focus groups, surveys, interviews. Honestly, these seem so, so big and massive. Go out and ask people, find your biggest fans, ask them to be who would be honest with you and get some insights from them. Call them up, watch what posts are doing well, what aren't doing, put out a question on social media and ask a poll. There's a lot of informal ways of doing it that can give some valuable insights to who your audience is. There's also industry reports. This is an older one. If millennials are something that is of interest to you, you can check this out. It's one thing they say what I found interesting is 72% say music helps them connect with friends and family. Some of these insights might surprise you, but it's beyond just you. It's, it's these things that really make a difference for them. And that's where some of these, this research can inform your decisions. Um, it drives, music drives social media and, and we know everyone's on there. It's a place definitely during COVID that people are digesting and taking in music. So know where they are and who they are and where they're spending time. One thing you can do as an exercise is an empathy map. And you can have this as a template to work off of what do they think, what they what do they say, and what are they actually hearing? You may say something, but they might not be hearing the same thing. So you'll want to dive into that a little deeper. And then how does your music make them feel? I'll tell you, music is the conduit for empathy. It is there and you have a powerful tool to help them connect with you. So get to know what they're looking for, what their challenges are and what their motivators are. It's a great exercise. So here's an example of goals. So goals number three, 
what business goals are you supporting? So if your goal for your business is to monetize live events and that's where you, it is, I'm going to now do this, I'm going to go on Facebook or wherever it is and I, I want to make my money off of that. Perhaps you have merchandise, maybe it's a combination, but know what those business goals are, where you want to get there at what timeline, because that's going to support your marketing goals. Because if you don't, if you're just throwing it out there and it's not targeted, you guys mentioned that you want to know if you're successful. This is how you're going to know if you're successful. Where do you want to go as a business? And then what marketing do you need to do to help you get there? What are those success factors? So if marketing, if I say, okay, so I have a live event coming up in September, what do I need to do to get people to show up and actually be able to provide, you know, buy a ticket, do the tip jar, whatever that is. So you need to make sure that you have the, the journey thought through, the promotions are out there, the different content that you need and making sure when they land on your website or wherever that is, that all the mechanisms are in place so that they can purchase from you. So all of that is based on your business goals, then you create marketing goals and you create timelines and smart objectives. So smart objectives are, they have to be specific, they have to be measurable, they have to be achievable, they have to be relevant and they have to be timely. And that will inform the next section. That's the channel. So where are those people? And remember you did all the target audience research. Now you're gonna go, okay, well, what channels do I need to be on? Because you cannot be everywhere. Don't be, please. One of the takeaways I need for you to have today is that you need to know which channel to be on to spend the most time on because it's better to do few things and do them better than to be everywhere. So really pick and choose which channels. And there's three types of channels, as they might say. And the first thing is owned. So your owned is where you control your brand. This is what you have. You, they're not free, but you can do, you, once you have them, some of them are free and some of them aren't, but you can control what content, what it looks like. Um, that is the most important. Before you do anything else, you need to make sure your owned channel, and we're gonna talk about those, the owned channel is optimized first. And then what's gonna happen is you need to pay to play. So there are some paid channels, which would be your social ads, your, your Google ads, whatever that is. And it's gonna drive people to your own channels and it's gonna supplement. Earned is those, that's that valuable sweet spot that you can't pay to get that. That's media coverage. That's somebody picking you up, asking you to be a guest somewhere, someone doing a review, somebody doing a referral. You've got to come out to this event. These guys are awesome. You have to, you have to hear them. And oh my goodness, yes, you have to buy their, their album. So these are the kind of things that earned. It's proven that people will listen to other people's and their testimonials more than anything. So if you have testimonials, you want to be putting it out there. If you have the opportunity to get reviews, you want to get those. And so that is earned. So those are the three kind of channels that you're going to think about using. And the criteria is audience. Are they there? Because if they're not there, don't use them or don't go onto that channel. You want to make sure they're there and they're active and they're continuing to be there. Trends will be, is this platform, is this channel going to stick around? Like there's this, I always use Snapchat. I guess it's still there but it's kind of losing its interest. Industry report shows it doesn't quite often, um, most people don't use it. Maybe the younger generation uses it. It's, it's not really going far, but Facebook continues to lead, continues to develop, continues to support integration with other tools. They're buying new things. So this is where trends come in and trends, not just in the platform, but trends in your industry. If people are are, maybe they're still on Twitter, but they're slowly going off Twitter. Maybe it's time to pull away your time from Twitter and put it into another platform. Budget and resources. Budget is money. A lot of them don't cost a lot, but budget doesn't just include money. It's also skills. Do you have the skills? Are you familiar with it? Or do you have to learn a lot about it? And do you have the time to be able to create content for that channel as well as keep it up? as well as engage with your audience on that channel. And then are there any regulations? I don't think it 
affects, I don't know if there's any musician regulations that you need to consider, but there are some industries that do that. The other regulations you have to think about is email marketing, it's the Canadian anti-spam law and some other ones too, which we'll mention later. And at the end of the day, effort to impact. How much time is it gonna take me to do this, to manage this, to be able to get the return on investment of my time and energy? And some of them, don't take a lot. Some of them, it's just about creating a profile and you check in once a month, that's it. And others take a lot of time to create content. We've got YouTube, what's the expectation of the platform to be able to have an algorithm benefit if like, YouTube wants you to post regularly, that's part of their criteria. So those are the things effort to impact before you commit because you're going to commit to a channel, you can't just, kind of dabble in it or you can it's just if you don't if you want uh, a return on investment for your time you want to make sure you pick your channels properly and create a strategy for each channel so that's how we pick our channels so some of them that are out there whoop, is social media here's just a quick list google business listing it's typically not considered social media but it's absolutely um, directories are key and especially in the music industry so you'll have directories on where people, musicians are playing, maybe it's an event board, your Google business listing does allow for service and you wanna put it out there and there's posting opportunities. So Google business listing, okay, you know what? I think my thing's going off here. Messaging apps, WhatsApp is another one. WeChat um, is not all, it, it's surprising how often it's out there, but Facebook messaging apps um, and Instagram, DM, they're, they're moving forward. So messaging apps are something to consider. Email marketing is still, still viable and good. There's a lot of people using email. Consider forums and Reddit. Go and answer some questions, engage in conversations. It's not always about selling. It's just about being in front of people. PR 2.0 means it's going beyond just your traditional press release. It's about engaging with those stakeholders. And then within your industry, especially the music industry, look for those niche outlets. Um, if there's publications, um, print publications, probably not so much now, but a lot of them have digital. Are there broadcasting publications that you wanna get in involved with? Um, event platforms. I know for us, Eventbrite is a search engine unto itself. We put it out there and quite a few people just find it, our events, because we're on Eventbrite. And that's where, don't forget about that. E even if it's a little extra work, we could do our registration in other ways, but people find us. So that's, that's also an opportunity to create a profile there. And then membership sites, which I know in the music world, you guys have quite a few of them. So there's a couple more quick questions. And if you can check out your poll, poll time, we should have a little bell that goes off. Um, Amon Preet's put up some polls. So I'm curious about how many people have a website. A lot of musicians from what I've heard don't um, or don't focus on it or don't see the necessity. Um, I, I want some, I want to learn more about that. So I'm curious, do you have a website? Yes, no, are you in the process of designing it or do you want to one day have that? And the other thing is what type of content are you currently creating? And please multi-select this one. Are you doing social media posts? Are you doing social media videos? Videos are a little different on like live video. Are you doing Insta little mini videos? Or are you doing large production pre-recorded videos? Um, and then also blogs. And blogs are something that um, not too many musicians I've seen leverage blog opportunity, but it's a blogging platform where you write articles about different things. Maybe it's places that you've um, gone to, whatever that is, do you write articles um, as part of your content marketing strategy? Oh, and I'm so excited to see that 75% of you have a website. Yes. Okay, I'm pretty excited about that. And what type of content are you creating? Oh, you guys are great content people. Social media posts, 78%. Social media video, 67%. Videos pre-recorded 67% and 56% of you are doing live video. So great. And there are a few of you doing blogs. So, okay, that's really great. Thank you everyone for participating in that. Um, we have 20 seconds left. Is there anyone left? Oh, you guys are awesome. 
Okay. And so there's a few of you that still aren't, haven't, um, don't have a website. And I'll be curious to see after today if that changes for you. 78%. Okay. Super. Thank you everyone for participating. I, I appreciate that. And I, I will again send that out all the information out to you. If you're interested, you can have that uh, for your research. So, right channels, this is just a sample mix. This is where we said, you know, pick and choose. Don't do everything. Maybe you have your website, you have a blog, you've created your Google business listing. You've decided you're going to use these 4 social channels. All of them have a different strategy. And then you're going to do maybe a monthly newsletter. And every time you're going to do an event, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm promoting my albums coming out this fall. I'm going to put some ad money again against it. So that is your channels. You've decided to work with these channels, just as an example. And before, or the next step, what we do is after we decide our channels, we're going to think about branding. And this is something that uh, I have just introduced into this, this program here because it's so important. You have to make sure that your brand is consistent across all your channels. So what does branding look like? Um, it's going to be your visuals. It's going to be your style. It's going to be um, what fonts are you going to use? And, and we're going to show that to you. Here's an example. Um, Scottduncan.ca is just launched his website. Pretty exciting. Um, a big change. Scott had a website before and worked with a graphic designer to create his brand story and came up with this. One thing I will mention on this with the website it doesn't have to be complicated. There's a lot of templates out there, but it does have to have some key elements part of it because people now there's best practices. There's expectation that when I land on your website, I want to know who you are. I need to know a little bit about you that I've actually landed on the right place that I know that this is the right Scott Duncan. So under about talk about that. And if you're a musician, you're probably going to have events or you will. Once um, the crisis um, passes, or you're going to be doing Facebook events, there's different online events. People want to know where they can watch, watch and listen to you. The music, the downloads, of course, you need a whole music section. You tip jar is a place and opportunity for for fans to support our musicians. And so give them that opportunity, make it easy for them to say, hey, I want you to keep creating. I want to support you. So please let me um, fund your project. And that's where you can do with something like a tip jar. Media will be something that can be your blog. You can call it blog, you can call it whatever you want, but that's where you're potentially going to be in the media nice. and you want to. So tip jar is a place where we can support you. Media is talking about it's other people who have mentioned you in the media. It's also about you writing things. So if you are a backup artist and as Scott is, there is a potential for you to support the people you, you, um, you play with. So maybe you've gone out on tour or you've been invited to, to play with someone. You can talk about a recording experience. Maybe it's somewhere that you have traveled to or different things or behind the scenes projects, sort of insights in there, whatever works for you and your brand is something that you can create a blog for or a media for. And the reason is not only does that take into consideration me, the fan who shows up at your website, who wants to know more about you, but it also gives you search optimization for Google. So if someone's saying, hey, I wanna to go to an event in uh, Mississauga, you have now created an event about maybe you're coming to Mississauga, you're going to play here and it will show up on search. I mean, not necessarily the front page. It depends how well you're optimized, but it does um, give you fresh content, which Google likes as well as information for Google to crawl through. The other thing is merchandise. If you have merchandise, put it on your website. It's a central place. And then the contact, how can I contact you? So what I always say about your website, it is that hub of everything. You need to make it as easy as possible for people to find you. So if they saw you on a talk show or on a guest on a live, or you were somewhere and you were out there and 
uh, I'm on Instagram, but I don't know what your handle is, or I'm on Facebook, where do I find you? You know what they're going to do is they're going to take your name and then they're going to put it into Google search and they're going to look for you. The easiest way is, hey, that's my name. That's my URL, scottduncan.ca. I know Scott Duncan. So then I go to the website and I see who he is. So that is making it easy for me, the fan, to connect with you, learn about you, find all your social media links because it's going to be at the bottom and they're all going to work. And then I also can see how I can support you and how I can listen to you and how I can listen, um, visit you at uh, your events. So this is why the website is so important as that central hub. Okay, so website, it's gonna be optimized, it's branded, and this is what we call a branding strategy. So Scott worked with Acorn Marketing to do a branding um, package. This is quite extensive, done by a professional graphic designer. And, uh, but please just get inspiration. If you're going to do this yourself, what you need to make sure is that it's consistent. So what I want to say is we have a color here and we have Scott's new logo. So you have a logo. The other part of a branding package is the vision. So working with a designer or, you know, maybe it's you've come to me as a digital marketing consultant and you want me to evaluate your brand. I'm going to ask you what your vision is. Who are you? What, what do you represent? Because you want to make sure that your brand represents you. And then your, and then the designer created a mood board and textures as an example. And this is, was all part of the process of, Hey, is this really you? So if they've done their homework and they get to know you, this is what comes out of it. And then there's a, an example of textures and, and, and images and colors. And then out of this, this is really important because your colors that you, you have primary and secondary, and you have your hex numbers, which is what you're gonna use on digital. You need to use that consistently across all your platforms all the time. So make sure whether you choose them yourself, you write them down and you know what they are. And then make sure your variations also fit into a landscape and they fit into an icon because Please don't use a landscape that goes out here into a square icon like Facebook and it's all crunched up. This is representing your personal professional brand. You want to make sure it looks right in every aspect that it needs to be in. And then you're going to have consistent fonts. And then what, um, what they did for Scott was create a mock-up of the website before it was created. So he knew what was going to happen and then as well as social media mock-up. So it doesn't have to be that that green because there's secondary colors through it. What's your Instagram gonna look like? And then what's your Facebook cover going to look like? So that is part of what, what would be part of a branding guideline. And again, this is a very extensive one, but please get inspiration and know that colors and styles know who you are and keep them consistent across all your channels. Jay, um, Jeff Hardy is another example. If you want to check out his website, he is a graphic designer as well. And so obviously he's been able to do his own, but he is a, a musician on the side and, uh, and he has a great example to be able to uh, showcase and get inspiration from. So here is your checklist. Make sure when you do get your websites, a simple URL, you have good secure web hosting. It's easy to navigate. You have those essential pages. And I went through all of this earlier. You're going to have this as a resource afterwards. So make sure that you reference it if you are ready to start your website or you're going to go in and audit your current website. There are templates available. It doesn't have to be difficult. You don't have to spend a lot of money hiring a designer if you have that technical skill set. Squarespace is what we call a site is one example of a site builder that has templates. There's Wix, there's a few different ones just to show you an example. And they often will give you ideas based on your profession. So the kind of content you put up, make sure your photos are optimized. They look clean, they're high resolution. If you have to reduce it, use tiny JPEG, it works really well. And these are some other tips. Hyperlink images, if it makes sense, make sure that all your links are working is crucial. Use keywords that make sense for Google as well as your visitors. 
and then backlinks. Those are the links within and then work. You potentially um, get external links. So anything coming from your email marketing, things like that, you want to make sure they're working. And you want to make sure that your web page loads quickly. It's mobile friendly. You can navigate easily throughout your website. Get someone to test it and, and have a look because you spend a lot of time on your own content. This is where you want to have someone come in and do you a favor and, and look through it. Make sure it's visually appealing. If you haven't looked at it for a while, this is the time to do it. Um, so this is where a blog, if you're going to create a blog, you want more information, there are some guidelines to creating it, and this will make it easier for people because people scan. People aren't really big readers anymore, so they're going to scan the titles, make sure they work, and then you always want to make sure you have a feature image and then making sure that it's part of your content strategy so that it, if you're going to create a blog, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to subscribe? Do you want them to sign up for one of your events? Make sure that link is there. You know before you create that content what you want them to do. If you want uh, information, there is a link at the bottom to learn more about blogging. And then Google My Business. If you don't have a Google Business account um, or Google Business listing, you need to have one. This is important for local search, but also just for optimization as far as the posts go. There's a place that Google allows you to put up posts. Hey, you're doing an event. Add this as part of your directory and it's free. You can also track the metrics on Google. They're, they're wonderful for that. It's a place, um, last year I visited these guys and of course, um, I mean, their first thing I do, I Google them and see if they're there and what kind of reviews. Should I use this recording studio? Should I not? This is that earned media that you want to um, tap into because people are looking for reviews. So make sure you're up on Google Business listing so that people can actually do this. And this is where you're going to be able to see it. And so is everyone else. And another thing as part of the branding is make sure you have a, a Google email that actually has your URL in it. If you have currently have a Gmail or you have a Hotmail and things like that, to take it to the next level to brand it, it's really a good idea to have at least an info at your URL or your name at your URL. And the part of the reason is it looks professional. This is part of your branding because you're communicating through email, but it's also a part of I now know what your website is. So if you've emailed me, all I have to do is click on that and go, hey, that's where they are. That's where they want to do. So if you're connecting with potential venue, um, people, um, PR, and uh, the media outlets and things like that, it's an instant way for them to recognize you, not only, again, for the, your professionalism, but the fact that they can find you. So Gmail is one of the places, it is a paid service. I, eight to $10, I think a month, you'll have to double check on that, but you have the whole Google suite. The other thing they do, and since we're now online and meeting, part of the Google suite is being able to meet um, similar to Zoom with their, um, with their products. So it's a Google Meet video and voice conferencing. So there's some added benefits to consider. So Facebook, let's jump into social. Your stats, figure out where people are and what they're doing. These are old statistics, but what I wanted to show you is when you want to know if your audience, remember that was part of the critical checklist, is here. These are the kind of things you want to look into. And there's a bunch of research, socialmediatoday.com. Social Media Examiner is another place that you want to go visit. They have an industry report if you want stats on different social media profiles. Facebook is also offering an incredible amount of resources during COVID. Um, and then there in some current, some development that they were working on before because of COVID, a lot of these developments have been pushed up and are available. So if you haven't looked into it, please check it out. Facebook and Instagram shops are one of the services. Um, you can look into the COVID-19 tag for posts is something they've done. They can announce temporary um, closures and, uh, and there's different things. So digital gift cards are also something that's available to them. One great thing for our musicians is the video creation kit template. So if you haven't had a chance to look into these guys for those, um, they're a really good resource right now. And then they have 
courses, free courses, messenger videos. Um, you can even join without a call as one of their developments and you can have up to 50 people with no time limit, which is an incredible uh, the, um, video conferencing option. More security and privacy controls and eventually Facebook and Instagram will have integrated messaging and that's coming down the pipe as well. So this new algorithm is not new, but what we have to remember is when we start posting on Facebook, we need to create meaningful content. And what that means is, oh, live video. So you guys, most of you are already there. Consider that if you want to be found, live video is key. Um, content from groups is really good. If you have the opportunity to be part of a group or to create a group, um, posts that generate comments are the ones that will come up in the um, algorithm and be put in front of people. And that's where you extend your re reach. Um, friends and family, those kind of posts is what they're looking for as well. So what's the difference between Facebook and Instagram? And so many people say, oh, do I even have to have Facebook? I think most of you are pretty good with Facebook, but there are some key reasons why you might have both channels. And there are things Facebook has and Instagram doesn't, one of which is groups. It gives you a focused audience, you know, so if you know you have a certain age group or a certain style of music because of um, the style of music, you might want to go and be part of a group that is all about that. It's not a music group. You get out in front of people potentially from that culture that like music, because they're going to be the fans. And this is where we get comfortable around our own people, our own um, style. So it's digital marketing person. I love to hang out with other digital marketing people as I get to learn. But if I have decided that musicians or professional services or whatever industry I'm going to get into, I'm going to look for musicians and figure out where they're hanging out with, what groups they're hanging out with. And you need to do the same with your fam with your fans. So rich text formatting and posts, these are some of the things that are coming up with groups, um, events, local business listing, um, events help people um, to schedule their events. And I'll tell you, if please, even if you're doing a live event, now Facebook keeps adding all these things, you can let people know, hey, um, if you wanna be notified when this person goes live, make sure you click it on. So there's a lot of things Facebook is doing to support live events and which will really um, assist with our musicians right now. Facebook Live, talking about that, there is a feature for co-broadcasting. Many of you probably have already been doing that. I will be curious on how, you're, how this is working for you. Um, you can charge access, know that Facebook does take a percentage. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have tried that, but they're, they are offering that feature and now you can do bulk uploads. If you want to learn more about those, blog, um, blog.hubspot.com is one of the um, resources that uh, has more information. And if you wanna advertise without going into too many details, all of our platforms, Facebook, Instagram, they all have their own, they want you to advertise. So they have their own guidelines, they have tips. Check out these guys and make sure that if you do have a website that you take that pixel and you can put it onto your website so you can track the traffic and do some retargeting if that um, is part of your strategy. So here's an example. I'm gonna push through because I have a, a bunch of content here. Um, so this is a local musician who has a really great Facebook presence. If you notice the logo fits within the icon, his, his handle is his name, totally recognizable. The cover photo looks um, great. It's optimized. It's actually a video, which can be done now. He has that call to action, which is book now, which can also be sign up for your email, learn more. There's different options that are available. Fill out your about page. And this is who you are. This gives people an idea of the background of you as the artist. Make sure your left side is all filled out properly. Just don't go with your standard. And if you've changed and pivoted and added live video or videos, make sure it's there. And then create um, different posts. So go around and this and see what other artists are doing and get some inspiration from them. And videos, when you click on that, you'll be able to see all the different videos. Facebook really does put things nicely together. So make sure your page is optimized. For Instagram, 
we have a Roots hoodie here, but honestly, if you have some merch that's really great, like a t-shirt with a really cool logo or coffee and you want to sell it, Instagram lets you put these things in. You do have to social commerce. There's a bit of work to get, do to get into that, but the social commerce trends are is it's continuing to grow. So please consider Instagram um, in your social commerce strategy. Make sure your grid doesn't have to be all words and whatever, but it's consistent with your brand. Patagonia is one of my favorites. And there, what does this say about Patagonia? Is they're a lifestyle company. They're not selling the product. I don't see people selling things here, but they're showing people actually using it and engaging in it. Um, what I'd want to pull out from this though, is that their profile is I know who they are, so make sure your profile is well filled out. Don't use anything cryptic. Make sure it's simple, explains who you are, that the link goes to the place you want it to go, and that uh, and that your brand is information is all there. You only get one link in Instagram, so make sure you use it well. Get some inspiration. Pick a grid. These, this is really, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. But this gives you some inspiration to work off of. I just want to leave that with you to go through at a later time. And then if you're not using stories, please use stories. There's some really cool things. You can get polls. This is part of your target audience. You can figure things out. And it's just um, polls allow for engagement, location, at mentions, hashtags. They're a great thing. They last 24 hours. You can archive them. It comes up at the top of people's feeds, so it is a place to do. So you can do multiple stories and uh, and be noticed. So definitely consider Instagram stories and Facebook stories. Tags, people are asking about hashtags. Figure out what works for your music industry. Mus Mississauga Music is a hashtag that I found. So if I'm looking for artists in Mississauga, I'm going to search on a hashtag Mississauga Music because I don't know specifically where it's going to be. So that's one of the key things to make sure when you do post that you use these relevant hashtags so they're going to come up in people's fans who want to hear live music in Mississauga that what are those hashtags that they're using and your profile will potentially come up in that one live music rocks is uh, one and you can and then now you look at this and you can click on different profiles the other thing how people are using hashtags is um so this is um, an artist that I have seen a few times and quite enjoy. He just, I could not find his handle, but it seems that everyone is using his name as a hashtag because we want to mention people, but if you don't have your own profile, this is what comes out of it. I do not encourage this to be part of your strategy. Have a handle. You can create your own hashtag as a secondary, but you want to control the branding. Now I don't know where to go to find him. And at the end of the day, your fans, your audience needs to be able to find you. So I can hear about you, but I can't find you particularly. Looking for music hashtags, socialbuddy.com slash music hashtags is a place to check out. And live music rocks. So what I did, this is part of it. There's a profile. I, I looked, she's got an instrument. It's like, who is this person? This is part of what I did. And I went to her profile and went, oh, this is interesting. Catch me outside doesn't really say anything about her. Um, and it does go to a Spotify playlist. I did kind of figure out she must be a person that actually does um, supports playlists, but it was uncertain. I had to scroll through quite a bit to actually hear her music. It was not clear really what she does. And so I will say, please go through and, and figure out why you're using the platform. What are your goals? Where do you want them to go within your entire strategy? And make sure it's there and use that single link really well. Here's another example. I'm going to go through the last year. I, for this, uh, a similar um, session that I did, I found this as an example and then found them this year. So it's really neat. The grid has been updated. And what I liked is his URL has changed. So strategy changed. So what that says is that what you create now for your strategy is going to be updated as you evolve as a musician, as you evolve as your business, as digital marketing changes, you can go in and learn. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure it's part of your overall strategy. So he takes you to your YouTube. 
YouTube, I can, okay, it's like, so what I need to learn more about this gentleman. So I go to his about page, I go to links and look at that. All his links are here to his different socials. So if I want to see him on Instagram, it's going to there. And I just came from there. That doesn't make sense, but maybe I want to go on Facebook and Twitter, but I want to see what events he has coming up. So what do I do? I click on his website and bam, there it is, all his stuff. So that's part of the journey that you need to think about as a musician when people find you from different touch points. And your YouTube channel is key. Many of you have it, as you mentioned um, in your registration. So make sure this is part of your brand strategy, that you have your YouTube channel with your brand information on it, that you have created playlists, that speak to the different style of music. Maybe it's things that um, uh, just different, maybe it's fun little at home stuff. Maybe it's your big production stuff, different things so that you can organize it in somewhat like chapters. And then your about section needs to be opened. I love these guys. They have a really cool brand. It's consistent, it's fun, it's playful. And then when you go to their website, which they have in their about section, um, it's pretty clean and it speaks to their brand and has a actually engaging, um, quite an engaging website. So we're checking out for inspiration. TikTok, uh, not sure how many of you on there, but look at it. It's big for music. Um, this is, it's here, tiktok.com. There's a whole bunch of highlights, not going to go through them, but you can read them afterwards. These are some tips if you're going to use them. They're short, they're fun, but I'll tell you, it's music, so music driven to the point. Well, and then you can get hashtags and don't always look for just music hashtags. Remember we talked about getting to know your audience. What are they doing? So maybe you go and you find different people using different hashtags. Maybe they're they're outdoorsy folk type people that love hiking, go and search and figure out those people and start engaging with them. This is one example of a person that uh, didn't have a lot of followers. And then she created this really cool little song on here, a little bit of a challenge. She used one word and then created this little music and it blew up. It went viral, everyone loved it. Um, she then was requested by all of these people, like look at all those likes, all of these people to put it on Spotify where they could download it because, and she was engaging. She not only put it up there, she was listening to her audience. She was interacting with them and then got some amazing downloads. Just an example of one little piece, you have to have, no matter what, marketing does not make you great, but it does amplify your greatness. So make great content, make sure you're out there on the right channels, engage with people, listen to them, and then, uh, and then keep it going and make sure it's part of your strategy. So that TikTok example and LinkedIn. Okay. A lot of you probably are going to, uh, LinkedIn really, is that where I want to be? Um, it is my world in professional services, things like that. For sure. I would engage a lot on LinkedIn, but I will tell you, and I, put it out there that everyone needs to have a professional LinkedIn profile. Remember we talked about effort to impact, create it, go through this checklist, make sure it's there, all your URLs are, are working, you've created yourself as a professional musician, talk about in your about section, which is down here, there's a whole list of things to do. In your about section, you say who you are, what kind of opportunities you're looking for, and honestly, that's it. You go in, you update it, maybe you check it once a month, you make sure it's current, you keep the app open. So if there's any notifications, if somebody's messaging you, you never know if you're a musician and the potential for a professional person who is now looking for a musician to support their online live event, they might find you through LinkedIn. So effort to impact, create your profile, make sure you check in periodically, and you just never know. So do do your LinkedIn. There's a whole checklist here for you to go through and make sure your sections are covered. If you need help with LinkedIn, let me know. I can uh, I can assist with that. So email marketing. Why are you going to do it? Well, because pretty much everyone still has a, an email, and so you can get right through the noise of social media because sometimes it can get noisy. It goes right to their email. So creating a news list or a VIP list. It, it, could be part of your strategy. And then even if you do online shopping for your merch, they have proven too, even or or your live events, you can uh, you 
it's, it's proven that it's effective. What you do have to know is that you need consent and express consent means that they've given you permission. Implied consent means that they're doing business with you, which means you can email them and decline means I don't want to, I don't want your on your list anymore. All of this information is down here. It does change quite often. Depending so my, my recommendation is to you is to make sure that you go and you read this. There is an email marketing webinar that I just did that speaks more to email marketing as a strategy that should be posted on our website soon. If that is a, a channel that you want to look into, I will definitely send out links when that's ready. And when you do do emails, make sure that you give them a reason to sign up. Give them something. Is it VIP status? Is it a free download? Whatever it is, they're going to give you their email, which is quite valuable. Um, so make sure that you you provide to them some valuable. Make sure it's easy. It's on your website. Um, or, yeah, website is still the best place for it to do. Third-party tools, use them because they have forms. They're really great. Often websites allow like certain forms to use it or MailChimp or um, Constant Contact or things like that, which are email marketing tools. Personalize it, segment it. If you have a media list or if you have... Maybe you have people in different, in, when we get back to traveling, maybe you have people in Alberta, you have BC, you down the States, and, and you can let them know when you're coming. That might be a segmentation. Maybe it's a style. Maybe you have two or three different styles of music that have different fans. You might want to segment those too, so you are, it personalizes it. And then start to engage with them. Put some polls in there. Do something fun. Stick out some quizzes. It'll keep them so that they don't decline and ask to be off your list. So know that this type of email marketing where it's specific and segmented and personalized definitely drives um, revenue and it has been proven. Social media examiner is a place to learn more about this because obviously I can't get into this all in the need, nitty gritties. These guys also have a podcast, which I listen to daily. It's really a good site to learn the hows of doing these. Engagement tips. How do we engage? And that is one of the harder things with people. It takes time and what do you say and how do you do it? Just make sure you take your offline online. So when you are out and about that, you encourage them to go to your website because they can get all the information. And that's part of having a website. You don't need to say, hey, my Instagram handle is this. My Facebook handle is this. You just tell them your URL. That's it. One place, one address, just like a mailing address. Go there and you're going to get all your information and it makes it easy. Ask questions, use hashtags, polls, thought-provoking questions. Remember we said about Facebook, wants engagement, wants comments, so ask them questions. It's sometimes scary because you don't know what you're going to get back. But put out, I mean, be careful. Don't get into too much political and contentious issues. But ask thought-provoking questions about where you are. And I've seen some amazing posts by some amazing musicians, especially during this time, which are really inspiring, encouraging, and promote um, resharing. So keep up the great work with that. Be a leader, like, share, comment, be a guest, potentially. At mention people, because as soon as you mention them, it shows up in their notifications. Go behind the scenes. I know some of you might not think it's exciting, but go behind, like go into the green room. Let us know how what you do to set up your mics. And again, I, I'm not the musician, but I would love to learn more. And that gives a, a personal touch to it. Live video is good. Show your team, your, your whole band. That's uh, always a fun thing too. And do some profiles, games, ask for contributions, tag people in photos we mentioned before. So make sure you're always adding value. Spend 25% of your time creating those connections because it, it is a balance of, of what kind of content you want to create. So you spend a large time pushing out and creating that great content. Look for people to go and engage, search on some hashtags and create some connections, and then spend some time promoting your product and service. So this Great shout out. I had a chance to be a guest. So this is an example of a local live event um, that Thomas Barlow does and the Tom and Rick show. And this is an example of if you're a musician um, on here, 
and you want to have let other people know. So you let other people know you're on. This is engagement. There's all of a sudden now there's all these comments in the side. It's like, hey, that's great. You're there. That's wonderful. Now there's traffic to your website. It's a chance to do things like that. So it's a, if you get the opportunity to be a guest, go out there and leverage that opportunity. Make sure you promote it. Let people know you're going to be on there and then share it afterwards. It's a collaborative marketing thing for the show. It's great for the musicians. It's good for all of us to work together in that way. If you're going to advertise video, you guys are already doing video, so you're already a step ahead. Use video, leverage video ads. And then some tips are create one goal, clear call to action, make it memorable, make sure it's going to the right page. So it's specific. You don't just land it to your home page. If you have an event, make sure it's going to your event that you're promoting and then check it out. Put a little bit of money behind it. Watch it. Facebook does this. There's a learning period. If it's doing really well, you can do a B testing and then you can put some money behind the 1 that's working really well. And then we only have 10 minutes left content marketing is another one that uh, I just did a webinar on. I can send the link to that pre recorded, but what that is, and really this is digital marketing, set your goals, figure out who your audience that you're targeting, create the content, produce resources, figure out how you're going to share it and promote it. And then you manage measure and adjust. This is one screen that I use all the time. It's kind of my go to mini plan. And just make sure you cover it off every time you go to do some type of campaign for digital or you're creating content. And this is what would be on an editorial calendar. I always like to have about three months ahead. Please create a calendar um, and you don't need to have this is just a quick reference, but have those key dates, what channel you're going to use and what kind of content as best as you can. It just and then you can supplement within it. But if you know you have an event that's coming up. You want to make sure that you plan that you're not scrambling at the end because you will get a better return if you plan your content accordingly. So you can use a spreadsheet, you can use a tool like Asana, you can use Google Calendar, whatever works for you, just plan it. So great content. This is just a dump of a whole bunch of content. Most people say, well, what is content? Photos, presentations, videos, you're doing videos, webinars, podcasts, blog, you guys already know all of this. So how do we make our content great? It needs to be unexpected, get to the point, Think mobile, be timely, make sure it's relevant to your audience, think engagement, and of course, tell a story. And this is what's telling a story is the way our brains work. It, it helps us um, be engaged because we know there's a middle uh, beginning, middle end because we've been trained that way. That's it's the bookend, but it also makes it memorable. And most importantly, we want to be memorable. So great content moves people through the sales funnel. This is kind of so businessy, right? But at the end of the day, we're tr trying to build awareness about our brand. Want to consider you? Oh, do I like your music? Maybe those are the little social media videos. Do I really want to show up and pay for a ticket or buy your merchandise or support you? Those are that's content that's um, there. And then loyalty. How do we keep them coming back? And that's building your fan base. And there's lots, this is where our webinars are that you'll be able to um, see more information. So first plan, create that content, promote it, check it out to make sure what's working and always, always adjust. So you're going to be consistent. You're going to produce relevant content. You're going to share on your own channels first and then put some money behind it if it makes sense. And then you're going to evaluate to see if you informed them. Did they get engagements? Did you persuade them to do what you wanted them to do? Make sure it's visual. That's how we think and you have 65% of people are visual learners and uh, we get it quicker and you have a microsecond. So make sure you get that up. Canva is a good resource um, for graphic design. They also have animated. It's a free tool. Oh my goodness. You guys have to check it out. I do use the paid version. So it lets, um, lets you optimize. It has stock photos. It does different things. But well worth checking it out. And if you're going to do your brand branding, there's a way to create logos and things like that. An amazing tool. Um, well worth looking into. Remember when you do your videos, getting into the videos now um, that most people do sound off. So consider captions if you haven't done that. There's a, a slide here that I'll leave you with for different video max length. 
um, based on the platforms. And then some video tips I'm going to leave with you guys too to review later. Just remember every time you create a video, know why you're doing it. Um, and then, and what platform you're going to share on it, because if it's on YouTube, the expectations is the quality is going to be better. Socials fun, quirky, it can be a little grainy and, uh, and it's short, quick and to the point. So make sure you know what channel you're going to do. If you're going to live record. Uh, live and then do recorder, it's pre recorded. Make sure you promote your videos so that people can find you. Create that storyboard, make sure your visuals and your lighting set up. Find the best time to go live um, and make sure you're responding to people when you're doing the videos, whether it's post recorded and they're putting comments or it's during a live event. And podcasts are another good opportunity. Learn more about podcasts here. And then you want to be able to track performance. So this is where we get into our, am I successful? And so where do you find out these metrics? Google Analytics, so if you have your website, make sure you have Google Analytics on. It's part of the, when you set up your Google business listing, it's your whole Google business account. Google Analytics is free. It's a little bit of code that you put on your website. Uh, if you have a site builder like Squarespace, you just plug it in. It's it's super, um, super easy, makes, makes it very easy. Uh, and uh, that is traffic to your website, a really key metric. If your website, you're using it as the hub. Google My Business has some social media insights, advertising reports, your music platforms, right? When you have Bandcamp or wherever it is that you're on, what's the traffic? What metrics do they provide to you for, for what's being done? Email campaigns, all of the third party emails have fantastic reporting. Social mentions, Google AdWords if you do that, and then you can also do surveys. And then in house um, for more other industries. I say. So tracking, here's some of the metrics that you want to think about, and they're very high level. But again, we talked about the awareness, consideration, and decision, right? Taking people through the, the funnel will depend on what situation, where you're targeting on what metrics you want to report on. So you want to people, how many people are following you? And it's not so much likes on Facebook anymore, really focus more on follows. It is a high level, we call it vanity metrics, because at the end of the day, it's, um, some people purchase follows too. Please don't ever do that. Um, and, and you want to get valuable quality over quantity, but you want to watch that it grow. That uh, that's an awareness level website traffic. Are they actually going to your website? What's the change in that? Is my post reaching people and Facebook and Instagram has some metrics there. Um, and that means it's, it's getting in front of people's feeds and that's the reach reach is a, a really good one. Still top of the level, um, stop at top of the funnel, but reach is one that I would look into and look into the insights is where you're going to find that information. If you're doing email campaigns, how many people are opening it? How many people are clicking through and what information are they clicking through? How many people are viewing the videos and how far into the video? This will inform also your video storyboard. So if people are only getting in two seconds, you're going, hmm, I'm not getting a good hook or then I'm not producing um, enough value right at the beginning to be able to keep them through. So this will help inform not only whether people are, your brand is aware, but how good is your content and always be evaluating these and taking these metrics and putting it back to your brand strategy. How many people like your post? But also the reshares likes are a great start because I'll go through and I, I look at people's different posts on Instagram and, and I will choose based on how many people liked a certain post and I will look, go to that too. So likes still are an important metric, but it's still only one metric of all of them. You have to take all of these into consideration and get the big picture before um, moving or changing or pivoting. Um, so reshares are really important because not only did they accept that this was great, but it's so worth sharing with their friends. And that's one of the key goals that you want to get to. And what kind of comments are they making? Are they, are they asking thought provoking questions? Are you able to respond to them? Are they thumbs up? Or are they getting into something negative? The type of con comments as well as the amount of comments ad conversions, um, and then online purchases. This is getting down into the decision, right? They've, they've purchased. Don't forget that your sales strategy um, for those and reviews and endorsements are obviously part of the loyalty. That means I'm, I'm sticking around and I want to share this with other people. 
So that's tracking performance metrics. And the, here's an example of a Google Analytics dashboard that you can find, which tells me what city you're going to say what social media referred to it. There's a certain where it's from acquisition and then where are they landing? Google Analytics is a whole course unto itself. Google does have courses on learning more about this if this is of interest to you um, and you can learn more. So key takeaways, customer centric marketing, make sure you're thinking the fan first and focus on their needs. Make sure that your brand in voice is consistent across all of your channels and do fewer, bigger and better. And then be strategic, know what your goals are and then be consistent and plan and move towards those goals and evaluate and then readjust. Segment whenever possible so that you can give them targeted relevant information. Send them to the right place. And we know, especially with email marketing, segmentation is really important to get that right message to the right person. And then personalization improves conversion by as much as 30 to 50%. So the more you know your audience, the more you can personalize your comments, the type of language used on your website, the type of content, the visuals, the style, all of that will help personalize the experience and really connect with you so they can connect with you and you can connect with your fans, which builds your brand, which will help build your business. So what does that mean? Personalization is the maximum enjoyment and minimize the time to find you. So if I saw you on stage or at a live event, an online event, and I want to know more about you. I want to know where to buy from you. I want to engage with you further and I can't find you. This, this is a problem for our businesses because then you can't build your brand. So make sure that you personalize, you maximize that enjoyment through social, through whatever it is, and then minimize the time that it takes for people to find you. And that's it. That's the seven steps. If you follow these seven steps, then you should be pretty good on being the contractor of your own brand.